فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم والمجمل ما افتقر إلى البيان والبيان إخراج شيء من حيز الإشكال إلى حيز التلجي تجلي ونقص ما لا يحتمل إلى معنى الواحدة وقيل ما تويله تنزيله وهو مشتق مشتق من منصه العروس وهو الكرسي والضائر ما احتمل امرين احدهما اقرب من الاخر يقول الضائر بالدليل ويسمى الضائر بالدليل The author رحمه الله he goes into a unit from the units of usul al-fiqh which is known as mujmal and he goes and speak and he speaks about nas and he also speaks about zahir and he also speaks about muawwal four things Four things is what he's going to speak about here. He's going to be speak about Mujmal, he's going to speak about Nas, he's also going to speak about Zahir, and he's also going to speak about Mu'awwal. And he started with which one? He started with Mujmal. Mujmal means something that's ambiguous. It is anything that requires clarification. It's maftaqara ila al-bayani. It is anything that requires clarification and it needs to be explained. Allah says in the Quran, aqimus salah, establish the prayer. How do we do it? We don't know, it's Mujmal. It's unclear. We need something to clarify what it means. What is Salah? What is it? The Prophet had to come and clarify it. So, that's what the author said. What it was better for the author to say is that Mujmal means مَحْتَمَلَ مَعْنَيَيْنِ أَوْ أَكْثَرْ لَا مَزِيَّةَ لِأَحَدِهِمَ عَنْ غَيْرِهِ This is the best definition. Which is that mujmal, it technically means anything that can take two meanings or more. And you can't strengthen one of those over the other. Is mahtamala ma'nayayni, it takes two meanings or even more. La maziyyat al ma'an ghayrihi, which you cannot strengthen one over the other. You can't. So in summary, mujmal has to have three pillars. For it to be called Mujmal. The first one is Ambiguity must enter into it. Or more like um, the possibility of it taking more than one has to enter it. It has to be something that more than one, that's one. The second is it has to be two or more meanings. The ihtimal. The possibility has to be in two meanings or more. Number three is, you can't strengthen one over the other. And no, لا يوجد في أحدها ما يستحق به تقديم على غيره. You cannot strengthen one over the other. You can't say this one deserves more over this one. If you do, then this is not called in mujmal. Then the author, rahimahullah, he defined what it means, al-bayan, which is the opposite of mujmal. He says, وَالْبَيَانُ إِخْرَاجُ الشَّيْءِ مِنْ حَيِّزِ الْإِشْكَالِ إِلَىٰ حَيِّزِ التجلي. Bayan means taking something out from the realm of ambiguity into the realm of clarification. That's what it means. Hayyiz means it's in... Uh, what does Sheikh Abdul Wahid say? What does Abd Sheikh Abdul Wahid Stevenson say? Hayyiz. When he defined it. Domain. 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 Uh, you're taking out of the domain of um, ishkal, which is ambiguity. Ila hayyiz tajalli. Ishkal is the opposite of tajalli. Tajalli is something that becomes wadah, clear. It's just clear to you now. That's what it means. Abu Mu'ali al Jawain, as I said to you before, he himself criticizes his own definitions and how he explains things here in his book in his own book Al-Burhan and this is one of the things he criticized of himself the usage of the word what? the usage of the word Hayyiz him using that word Hayyiz is incorrect you know why it's incorrect? because Hayyiz is min sifat al-hissi Hayyiz is from the, uh, the characteristics which, which show something is tangible are you with me brothers? and ambiguity is not something that's tangible Ambiguity is something which is ma'nawi. So how can you define something with a definition that shows that it's tangible when, when, when what you're talking about is ma'nawi and it is not hissi? This is side benefit. He himself goes into explaining that. 
That's the author's definition of what the word uh, bayan means. So we, we, as we said, if he himself criticized it, then it gives us no... We, 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 we can also criticize it as well. The best definition is to say about what it means bayan is amal mubayan is matabahat dalalatu. It's anything which is dalala. Dalala means the way it expresses its evidence is clear. فَلَمْ يَتَطَرَّقْ إِلَيْهِ خَفَاءَ And no... Uh, I'll just make up an English word, okay? I might be wrong or right. It's not the first time I've ever done it, so... Plus English is even a standard language, which you can't add what you want to it or not. English, you want, if you feel like it, you can just add what you want to it, no problem. Because what's, 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 what's holding it down for it not to be added to it? So anytime you feel like it, you can add any prefix to it, any suffix at the ending of the wording if you want. And I like doing that a lot. It's just called creativity, so I can change it, don't worry. Plus, I'm the linguist here. I'm the one who does, does linguistics in university. You guys, who does linguistics in university? Exactly. <laughs> so if I say something is right, okay? It's a hujah. <laughs> I think it's the right word. Hiddenness, is it a right word? Hidden. Something is hidden. I just want to add that nest to it. The end. It's not a word. Well, now it is. Now add it to your dictionary. You know, in the Indian English dictionary, you guys know the woman who wrote, uh, J is it J.K. Rowling's or J.K. Rowling's? The one, the one who wrote Harry Potter. Huh? Is it Rowling or is it Rowling? Huh? <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, you know she added terminologies into the dictionary. You guys know that, right? Her usages of English language in her Harry Potter was taken from it, Shirk Kufr book, <laughs> and it was added to the Oxford Dictionary, brothers. And your Muslim brother here is making up words, and you guys, you guys don't want to add it to your dictionaries. Yeah, Hamza, is that fair? It's not fair, yeah, Where's the brotherhood? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what it means is that There's no hiddenness Khafa means something is hidden There's no, it's not hidden in any way, form or shape It's clear no, I want it to be accurate in the depth Tatarruq means when something, it creeps in, it enters into it It be, hiddenness does not enter into it At all, any way, form or shape This is called Mubayyan, it's wadah, it's clear then the author, rahimahullah, he defined what is known as nas. Sometimes the scholars will say, this mas'ala is nasun fil mas'ala, I'm a nasun fil dalala. What do they mean by that? If you don't know, learn these terminologies, you're going to suffer. Because the scholars are going to argue and have debates and discussions, and they're going to say, hadihi nasun fil mas'ala. It's a nas in the mas'ala. What do they mean by nas? Nas means, ma la yahtamilu illa ma'anan wahidan. Nas is something that does not have no any other meaning except this. This is the only meaning it can have, no other meaning. When Allah said in the Quran, Tilka asharatun kamila. Tilka? Tilka asharatun kamila. Allah said this is the ten completed. Can you understand anything other than ten from this? I'm asking you guys a question. No, you can't. <coughs> so the added numbers are nas. Numbers are nas. 10 is 10. Is there anything else you can understand from 10? There's no other meaning that it can take, right? So, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد What is it? It's a nas. There's no other meaning that you can take from Can you take that Allah is 2 or 3? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد Be quiet. The person says, okay, okay. But what about when you say, إِنَّا نَحْنُ Are you with me, brothers? Inna nahnu, what is that? It's not nas. Nahnu can take more than one meaning. Nahnu can be used out of what? al muadzim nafsahu, the one that's speaking out of royalty, and also al mutakallim ma'ahu ghayru, the one that's talking and somebody else is talking with him. We, us, or the we of royalty. Does that make sense? That's not nas then. But nas is what? Ah, that numbers are generally nas. 
وقيلة it's also said ما تأويله تنزيله it's 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 interpretation is what it was set down for. The author here he mentions nas and then he speaks about. The first definition, by the way, is what we're going to take. مَا لَا يَحْتَمُ إِلَّا مَعْنًا وَاحِدًا That's the, that's the definition of Nas. Forget the second definition he gives. That's the حقيقة and the reality of what Nas means. Then the author, Rahimahullah, talks about where is the word Nas rooted from? What's the mushtaq of it? Where is it rooted from? And he says, مِنْ مَنَصَّةِ الْعَرُوسِ And the word Manas. Sorry, sorry. مِنَصَّةِ الْعَرُوسِ مِنَصَّةِ الْعَرُوسِ It's by Kasrul Meem. Place a Kasra on the Meem. Okay? Because it's a ismu ala. It's a ismu ala. Wala yuqalu manassah. You can't say manassah. And it's common people say that. Wa huwa min al lahn al shayya. Even me, sometimes I by accident say it. But correct way of saying it is what? Minassati. It's the throne, throne, you know? Throne. Mm -hmm. Here the author says, mushtaq. And that word mushtaq means rooted from somewhere, right? He doesn't mean it according to the usage that we mean, we understand from the word mushtaq. What, would, what do we know as mushtaq? What does mushtaq mean to us? It's something derived from something. How can nas, which is lesser in number, be derived from a word that's more than it in number? Yeah? What he means by it is that when you tell a person something that they know and you say, it's the same word. So he's trying to say that you guys know minassat al arus. That's the same, it's the same word that's been used here. That's what he means, mushtaq. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's rooted from it, it's taken out of it. Not, a, not, not in any way. He just means it from the general meaning which is talaq al huruf the letters are the same. That's what he means by it. Then the author, rahimahullah, defined what the word zahir means, zahir. What does zahir mean? Mahtamala amrayni. Are you there brothers? Zahir means what? Something that can take two meanings. One is more apparent than the other. So two things have to be found in the definition of zahir in order for it to be zahir. First one is that it, it carries, it, there's a possibility of two meanings. The second one is, the second one is, one of the two meanings is stronger than the other. Are you with me, brothers? Are you there, brothers? Zahir, what is it, brothers? Something that has two meanings. One is stronger to you, and the other one is what? Weaker to you, right? The part that is stronger is called Zahir, and the part that's weak is called Mu'awwal. The 60% or the 70% is called Zahir and the 30% or the 40% is called Mu'awwal. You only are allowed to take the Ta'wil when there is what? When there is a Dalil to show you the weaker meaning. Does that make sense? If the Zahir is the Rajih, is the stronger and it is the, the correct one. Are you with me brothers? The percentage that is less if you're going to take it, there has to be external evidences that pushes it. Does that make sense? So when a person speaks to you, you always understand it according to the apparent meaning. We take the zahir of people's statements. Are you there? Are you with me? Unless there's an evidence that pushes it away from the zahir to the... Nowadays, we're called literalists, right? They want to belittle us and say, you guys are literalists. Sah? That's ignorant to say that because everybody takes people's statements from the zahir unless they feel there's an evidence to show that that's not what's meant, meant by it. Are you there? That's what I'm saying. means ta'wil. Are you there brothers? But remember ta'wil is used in many different meanings. Here we're talking about according to the usuliyin. As for Ibn Jarir al-Tabri when he says to you, وَتَأْوِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى He doesn't mean ta'wil here. 
this meaning? He means tafsir. Because the word ta'wil is, is, is the synonym of tafsir as well. Are you there? But here is another meaning. When the Ash'ari comes to you and does ta'wil of Allah's characteristics, don't accept the word, the usage of the word ta'wil to him. Why? Why wouldn't you allow that usage of the word ta'wil? Because ta'wil means taking the weaker of the two with an evidence. And he's got no evidence. So what do you call it? You call it tahrif, distortion. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah didn't take the, the, the usage of the word ta'wil in his book. Have you guys read the debate on his kitab, Aqeetul Asatiyah? His munadhara. It's written, Ibn Abdul Hadi brings in his kitab, Uqud al-Durriya, fi ba'di malaqib Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. That Ibn Taymiyyah, when he debates, anywhere he used to go to debate, he used to always bring his Aqeetul Asatiyah with him. He used to put on his armpit, he would go to the debate and open it and say, hey, this is my Aqeedah. You guys, any, you got any problems? We can have a debate about it. So they'll look at it. So one of the things they brought against him is why did you use the word tahrif and not ta'wil? He said because ta'wil has a correct meaning in it. Ta'wil means taking the, the weak of the two with an evidence. But I don't believe you guys are taking, you're doing ta'wil with an evidence. Because we believe you can do ta'wil when there's an evidence for it. What we think you guys, what we believe you guys are doing is distortion. It's not called ta'wil. Does that make sense? And this is, as I said brothers, we're in a time and an era where we need to really learn that it's the world of terminologies. British values, what does that mean? There's no definition for it. We're getting beaten up and bashed up. Islamophobia is growing due to what? A word with its definition hasn't yet been placed. Sah? What do you mean by British values? I don't get, even get this. You keep throwing it at me all day. You're going against British values. You're going against British values. What is British values, man? Sah? Are you with me, brothers? So you have to say to the person, before we go into a discussion and a dialogue regarding an issue, let's agree on definitions. Because I'm going to use the word extremism, but I mean something that you don't mean. You think extremism is me having a bid right now. I don't see that to be extremism. Does that make sense? So don't just talk with them about extremism. We, we condemn extremism and they're next to you. They're next to you and they say, we're condemning extremism as, as well. Does that make sense? You're both using the same word, but he means it's something different. He, he's defining it different to what you're defining it at. Don't get caught up with it. So first of all, you say, listen, our definition of the word ghulu, extremism is different. Are you there? For us, leniency is extremism. Sah? Somebody not praying is extremism. They see extremism only be, to only be what? Exaggeration. We see negligence is also a form of extremism. Sahamza. Because Allah says, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, la taghlu fi dinukum. And Allah is talking about to the Nasara who came with negligence and the Yehud who came with exaggeration. Both parties. Or more, the Yehud who came with what? Negligence and the Yehud, who, uh, the Nasara who came with exaggeration. Both parties were told don't go, don't go extreme in your religion. So the sister doesn't wear hijab. Yeah? Who takes her hijab off. And the boy who's, uh, uh, who's not praying the salah and everything, we say, Yaqi, why are you so extreme for? Are you with me, brothers? That's how we have to look at it. Are, we with, are you with me, brothers? And that's why we're at a time when we need to learn to ask definition of words. Are you with me? We need to say, what do you mean by that word? Okay, I don't mean by that. Huh? And it is the tariqah that Ahlul Bid'ah caused harm to Muslims and Islam. Is they came and they said, Iman means tasdiq mujarrad. Just mere belief. Actions are not part of Iman. Why? Because Iman means in the language, just belief. And a whole concept just came from a definition of a word. And they took actions out of Iman, when it's, when it's part of the reality of Iman. Are you with me, brothers? Huh? Today, define jihad. What's jihad? Muqatalati, al-kuffar, al harbiyin right? Are you with me, brothers? Pay attention. So you're fighting a kafir who's a? Harbi. What do these people do? Are they fighting people of harb? From the definition, they're wrong. They're fighting women and children on the streets. Are you with me? They're killing Muslims in Muslim lands. When did, when did jihad become killing Muslims? It's kuffar. The definition says kuffar. Are you with me, brothers? 
So what we need to do is we're at a time where we need to say, listen, let's define what the word means first of all. And that's why I said we need to do a series called Tasheeh al Are you with me, brothers? What is da'wah today? That's, we need to go back. What is da'wah, brother? That's what we need to say to some people. So we need to make a series called Mafhum al-Da'wah, Mafhum al-Jihad, Mafhum al-Khilafah, Mafhum al-Jihad, etc. We need to do Tasheeh al mafahim Series like that, where we take Shara'i terms and we define what it really means in the Sharia. Are you there, brothers? Are we all on the same point, page? That's what's needed, a series like that, where these things are clarified and explained. Or else, there will come a time when these terms are loosely used. And it brings about, because each definition brings out ahkam yataratabu minha. Rulings start coming out from it. So, it doesn't just stay at a mere definition, brothers, it doesn't. People start, that definition starts to manifest on people's limbs and they start to do actions based on it. It's important. And this is something I'm telling you, brothers, Ibn Taymiyyah fought against. Sah. Ibn Al-Qayyim, in the beginning of his Kitab Al-Ilam, Al-Waqi'in, he debate, he argues this concept. Tasheeh Al-Mafahim of the Ixtilahat. Somebody's going to come up to him and say to you, music is halal. Ha, it's a ruling, right? If you ask him, how did this come about? He will say to the previous imma, they used to say, it's makruh. Okay, what's makruh then? What's the definition of what? Makruh. Makruh meant to the Salaf, Hadil Ummah, to be haram. That's the definition. Are you with me? For him, it is what? Ma talab al shari'u tarkahu talaban ghayra jazimin. That's what he believes it is. Sah? He's, he's taking a definition of the mutaakhirin, the latecomers, and he's forcing it on the mutaqaddimin. And then now what comes out from this is no, I mean, a tahakum. Then ahkam start coming from it. So that's why I think we need to, we need to uh, do this. Anyways, the author, rahimahullah, so what is the word mu'awwal, I'm a ta'wil, what's the definition of it? Ma surif an ma'anahu al-zahir, mu'awwal means anything that is diverted from its apparent meaning ila ma'anan marjuhin to a meaning that's weak. Based on the evidence that showed it. Four points is what my definition holds here. The first one is there has to be something diverting it. Wujud al-sarf. It's something that's doing udul and ta'wil of it. Udul and ta'wil, sorry. Something is turning away this definition. Second thing is it has to be diverting it from its apparent meaning. Third one is it is diverting it to a meaning that is weak. Fourth is there has to be evidence that shows this weak, this weak meaning. Evidence. You have to show me an evidence based on it. And from this what we learn as well is that the zahir is two types. First one is zahirun bi nafsi, something that's apparent in and within itself. And the second one is something that is not apparent in and within itself. And guess what's the thing that, what is the thing that's not apparent in and within itself? The mu'awwal, some of the scholars, they call it zahir. Because they say that the zuhur of it, it was weak. We couldn't tell. We thought it was the other meaning. But now it became clear to us that this is the zahir now. Does that make sense? Now. Okay, 
يقربه على الفعل كفعل وما فعل في وقته في غير مجلسه وعلم به ولم ينكر فحكمه حكم ما فعل في مجلسه The author, rahimahullah, he chapted a chapter which he called it Al-Af'al, actions. And the intent that he means from actions here, that he made it a general ruling, um, general uh, chapter for, he means by it, as he himself explained, he means it Af'al rasul the Prophet's actions. That's why he says, Fi'lu sahibu sharia the action of the Prophet. Sahibu sharia is the Prophet. So this chapter, it benefits us two points. It benefits us what? Two points. The first one is اختصاص هذا الفصل في بيع الأفعال. First of all, is that this chapter is only, I mean, this unit is only going to be speaking about actions, nothing to do with speech, nothing to do with verbal. It's just action. The second benefit that we take from this chapter is, it is only specific to the Prophet's actions, عليه الصلاة والسلام. 